So now let's consider adding perpendicular vectors. So let's consider, what do we mean by this? So let's consider uh, vector A. Vector A, and let's say that vector A is going to be 12 feet horizontally. Okay, so it's 12 feet horizontal. Okay, and then let's consider vector B, and let's say that vector B is going to be 5 feet vertical. Okay, so what would happen if I had A plus B? Okay, so what would happen is that we go over 12 feet and then we go up 5 feet. The result, so that's vector A, this is vector B, the result vector is like this. Okay. So I want to find the result vector. And so how do we I do that? Well, because these are perpendicular vectors, then that means that we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so, uh, uh, so that's, that's going to be uh, straightforward in this case. And so that would mean that R, the magnitude of R, magnitude of r is going to be the square root of uh, uh, 12 feet squared plus 5 feet squared. So that's going to be 13 feet. Okay. Now, what direction is it? So this is 5 feet. That's 12 feet. So what direction is that? We need to know that angle. Well, gosh, we can find the angle pretty straightforward. So the angle uh, 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 would be the inverse tangent of 5 feet over 12 feet. Okay, so we take the inverse tangent of that. Okay, so that comes out to be 22.6 degrees. Okay. So, vector, vector r, the way I'd write that would be 13 feet at an angle of 22.6 degrees. Well, what 22.6 degrees? That's 22.6 degrees above horizontal. So, that would be here, that's this. Do not say north of east, because this is not east, that's horizontal. This is not north, that is up. Okay, so that's not north. I mean, you don't go look straight over your head and say that's north. No, you say that's up. Okay, uh, so, um, so uh, do not always assume that when you graph something that the top of the page is north. Because uh, it's not. I mean, it's top of the page, it's top of the page. So you want to define that angle right there. And so that's, that's the, the idea here of adding that vector. Okay. And so this, this is a great, uh, 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 great example. Okay. So that would be a perpendicular vector. Okay. Do another perpendicular vector. Okay. So let's say that... Uh, that you are are you know going along somewhere and you look and there's there's a there's a uh, uh, deep well or something and you look down and you see something at the bottom of the well and you want to know the vector from your eyes to the bottom there and so you say that the well is uh, 22 feet deep and the edge over here is going to be uh, four feet over from the edge edge there. And so you want to know this vector right there. Okay. Well, once again, this, this, this is a right angle sort of thing. So we can find the magnitude of it. So we say, we can say vector A is 22 feet down and, and vector B is going to be four feet, uh, to the sides. So that's horizontal. 
Okay, and so the R, the, the R right here, Pythagorean theorem, once again, so square root of 22 feet squared plus 4 feet squared. So the R, uh, the magnitude of this, rather, so that's going to be... Uh, uh, That's going to be 22.4 feet. Now, what about direction? Well, we have an angle right here. Okay, so the angle, uh, 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 the angle is going to be the arc tangent of 4 feet over 22 feet. Okay, so now we do that arc tangent. And that comes out to be 10.3 degrees. Okay, now, so we get 22.4 feet, we got 10.3 degrees. So what do we got? We go down, we go over, so, so, so we now, you know, have here uh, uh, the 10.3 degrees. This was 22.4 feet. How do we describe that? Okay, now there's several ways of doing that. Um, in math classes, you almost always measure this way uh, 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 for an angle. So that means that you would measure all the way around like that. So you could say this is 22.4 feet at an angle of 280.3 degrees. Now that's how you'd write it in math. Um, but the reality is that's not how most people would describe that. Most people would describe that as 22.4 feet at an angle of 10.3 degrees away from vertical. So you could also write this as 22.4 feet at an angle of 10.3 degrees from vertical. Okay. Now, which is the correct way of writing it? Well, they're both correct writing it. So this would be 22.4 feet at an angle of 280.3 degrees uh, counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Okay. Now, obviously 10.3 degrees and 280.3 degrees is a huge difference right there. And so um, if you are describing a vector, you should go actually one step better than the book does. The book does it the math way for the most part. It always measures that way uh, uh, counterclockwise from the x-axis. Um, but really, uh, in, in real life, you normally measure an angle from whatever is the closest axis. And so, uh, and that's perfectly fine, but you have to say how you're measuring it. Okay. Uh, uh, in this case, it's from the vertical uh, or from, you could even be more specific, it's 10.3 degrees away from straight down. And that would make it really obvious what you meant. So in other words, it's not 10.3 degrees from straight up, uh, uh, both, both straight up and straight down are vertical. So you would say 10.3 degrees from straight down. Um, as a matter of principle, whenever you're giving something, uh, whenever you're giving a dimension, you measure something and you want to say, you know, that, that it, it, it is... Uh, and such, such and such distance from something, say where you're measuring from. You're always best off saying where your origin is. When you're measuring an angle for a vector, you should always say what direction you're measuring the angle from and what axis you're measuring the angle from. Always. Why? Well, don't assume that whoever you're talking to measures it exactly the same way. So you want to make absolutely sure that whoever you're giving this information to knows what you're talking about. That's always going to be the case. 
always you want to make sure whoever you're giving the information to knows what you're talking about. And so, so be blunt, be obvious with how you're measuring things. S say where the origin is, say which direction is positive. For the angle, say what the angle is and what direction you're measuring from which axis. And that way, if someone misunderstands what you said, misunderstood your directions, it is not your fault. It's because they weren't paying attention. Okay. They cannot claim you misled them. They cannot claim that you were unclear. They cannot claim that you were not specific enough. If you give all this extra information, uh, um, then it's on them if they make a mistake. And, and so, again, a really good engineer and scientist is very, very picky. And I don't know if I told you all this story uh, uh, before, uh, but I got a good friend that works for Lockheed. Uh, she's a rocket engineer for Lockheed. And as a rocket scientist, uh, 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 you ask her a question like, say, is the coffee pot on? It sounds like a real simple thing. Is the coffee pot on? And most people just look at it and say yes or no. What she'll do is she'll look at it and say, the switch is selected the on position. And the indicator light is lit. So there's a chance that it's on. Um, because you don't know for sure if the, if the element's burned out or not. You know, until you actually stick your hand on it and see if it's hot. But, uh, so, uh, but she will be very specific and she won't say it's on. She'll say the switch is selected to the on position. And even that's not a guarantee that it's on because it might not be plugged in. So if the indicator light is indicating that it's on, then that's a better, better, better hint. So, but she's very, very, very specific about these things. And you should be too. If you want to go into um, any kind of science or engineering, you should be that specific. If you're going into computers, computers you need to be very specific with. Uh, the computers will do exactly what you want them to do, not what, well, they will do exactly what you tell them to do. They don't always do what you want them to do. They do exactly what you tell them to do. So you have to be exceedingly specific because they don't read your mind and guess what, what you meant. They do exactly what you said. And, and, and so, uh, 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 that's, that's, that's what you need to do. You need to be thinking, hey. What exactly am I saying and be exactly perfectly 